Zem was one of the most important innovators in laparoscopy. Zem was a gynecologist, but also created many devices, instruments and techniques. He was transforming laparoscopy from a diagnostic tool into actual surgery. But in the 1980s, Kotzem was under extreme pressure. Most colleagues, surgeons and anesthesiologists, even in his own clinic, suspected brain damage and called the new surgery too experimental, even dangerous. Kotzem had to be tested by CT and MRI on request of public health organizations if he was normal because he insisted on this way of surgery. During a slide presentation on laparoscopic surgery, the projector was turned off to stop him from talking. Why and how did this happen? Kurt Zem was born in 1927 in Munich. His father was an engineer and toolmaker, and already in his childhood Kurt Zem came into contact with technical tools. He learned to improvise and to repair tools and devices. The books of Jules Verne were an inspiration to him. After medical school, he was recruited to Munich for training in gynecology. On international congresses, he first came into contact with the work of Raoul Palmer. Kurt Zem had his medical background and also was the creator of the medical instrument company Visap. He started designing new or improved medical devices and instruments and with his company, he could build them himself within a very short time. By 1967, peritoneal insufflation was fully automatic. A combined irrigation and suction instrument was created in 1974, the so-called aquapurator. But to really advance the surgical ambitions, it was important to control bleeding during laparoscopy without conversion to laparotomy. Thermocoagulation was developed in 1974, as electrocoagulation caused accidents due to unsafe devices. From Irno's throat surgery, he was inspired to modify the Röhler loop to be used in laparoscopy. He devised laparoscopic suturing methods, extracorporeal knot tying with a knot pusher, intracorporeal knot tying with needle holders. With all these innovations, real laparoscopic surgery became possible. This table shows the fast progression of different gynecological surgeries in Kiel. On May 30, 1980, Kurt Zem performed the first laparoscopic appendectomy. The patient had an enteric appendix to the fallopian tube with endometriosis. The following video shows one of the teaching films created by Zem. Die Summe aller technischen Möglichkeiten der Pelviscopie lässt sich bei der endoskopischen Appendektomie aufzeigen. Seit 1981 wird diese Technik in Kiel durchgeführt. Bisher traten keine Komplikationen auf. Wir betonen aber, dass die klassische Appendizitis in die Hände des Abdominalchirurgen gehört. Blutungsfreies Skelettieren der Appendix bis zum Zökumpol. Erste Unterbindung der Appendix am unteren Zökumpol in klassischer Weise mit Hilfe einer Röderschlinge. Setzen der zweiten Appendixligatur. Absetzen in klassischer Weise. In 1984 the board of directors of the German Society of Surgery complained about Sam's surgeries being unethical. But the results of his brain CT scan returned normal, and Kotzem continued his hard work to develop new methods and also to demonstrate the new ideas to his colleagues. The statistics show the rise of laparoscopy in Kiel. The most important teaching tool in laparoscopy, the so-called pelvic trainer, was developed in 1985. In three to four steps, the trainee would progress from binocular vision to performing the exercises on the TV screen. General surgery adopted laparoscopy rather slowly. In 1984, the first gallbladder was extracted by Mühe. Götz and Peer followed Sam's methods for appendectomies and suturing. In 1985, Beermann and Phillips from the United States visited Sam. They wanted to expose the magic and insisted on witnessing the surgery via the spy hole viewer. For Zem and Kiel, it was already routine surgery and the Americans were quickly convinced and asked him to give courses and lectures across the Atlantic. With detailed books about laparoscopy in gynecology and surgery in eight languages, many films and animations of the surgeries, the pelvic trainer 
and hundreds of courses and lectures around the globe, the breakthrough finally came and laparoscopy became unstoppable. The demand for devices, instruments and courses intensified. The medical community and the industry supplied. Video laparoscopy further spread its popularity. After Sam, a new wave of researchers, surgeons and engineers continued to explore new solutions and further improved patient safety. As a contemporary witness of my teacher called Sam, with whom I worked for 25 years, I do wish all the younger generations coming into our field many good ideas and don't forget to practice on a pelvic laparoscopic trainer and to improve. Thank you very much.